Hi everyone, hope you're all well. I know, I know, it's been quite a while since I've uh, posted anything, let alone uh, done a video. Uh, first of all, on that note, uh, thanks for um, asking after me, those of you who have uh, messaged me to see if I'm okay. I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> These are testing times, aren't they, uh, for a lot of people. Um, testing in so many different ways. We see a lot of people leaving us. Uh, permanently. Uh, we've lost a lot of uh, friends, family members, and loads of other stuff happens, doesn't it? It's life. Life happens. Sometimes life happens to us, and sometimes we make things happen in life. Um, on that note, I just thought I'd share a few thoughts um, before we see the closing of uh, 2021 of the Gregorian calendar. Um I suppose the reason I wanted to share these particular points is because they're very poignant in the grand scheme of things. Those of you who have attended some of my uh, talks or seen some of my interviews will have noticed that I've mentioned some of these in them. But I thought on this occasion I'd mention the top five regrets of the dying. Okay, don't be so morbid. There is, when you look at and when you analyze or when you think about these regrets it gives us an opportunity to make changes for ourselves and that's what it's about isn't it hopefully we can make those changes for ourselves and hopefully we can uh, progress further in life uh, in a more positive and constructive way so i'm not going to do much commentary on these i think they're fairly self-explanatory i've picked up the five top five reasons and, and put a summary of them from the author herself so basically these top five, well, how do we know that these are the top five regrets of the dying? This lady, Bronnie Ware, is uh, a nurse um, and she works in palliative care um, in Australia. Basically, she looks after people when they're dying for the last 12 weeks. And what she decided to do was uh, write a journal. She did a study on what these, well, she discussed a lot of things, but this particular portion of her study was based on the regrets of people when they were dying so if anybody wants to pick up the book you can pick that up as well it's written by uh, Bronnie Ware and I think it's called top five regrets of the dying uh, but he, these are the top five and I think it's worth considering these things and, and, and it's worth contemplating on these things um, as we go forwards in life we don't want to wait until we're dying and then think oh gosh one of our regrets being I wish I'd paid more attention to those top five regrets of the dying uh, by Bronnie Ware. So here we go. Number five, I wish that I had let myself be happier. It's interesting, isn't it? Um, let me read the, her short summary on that. This is a surprisingly common one. Many did not realize until the end that happiness is a choice. They had stayed stuck in old patterns and habits. The so-called comfort of familiarity overflowed into their emotions, as well as their physical lives. Fear of change had them pretending to others and to themselves that they were content when deep within they longed to laugh properly and have silliness in their life again. Oh, how many times have we... Um, prevented ourselves from being happy yeah prevented ourselves from being happy these are the key terms because it is a choice and then when we think about it we prevent ourselves from being whatever we want to be based on sometimes what other people might be thinking or what other people might say so it's important that whilst we think about this we think about our own lives and think about how we remember so fondly our childhood days, mainly because if you think about those anchors in our memories and our feelings are based on the positives and the silliness and the joyfulness and, uh, you know, the juvenile attitude that we may have had. I mean, yeah, of course, you can't always have a juvenile attitude to everything in life, but you can if you want to, but it's not always going to be the wisest thing to do. But think about where things started to go wrong if you're not happy as you should be as happy as you should be or you feel you should be or you deserve to be so that's number five number four i wish i had stayed in touch with my friends 
So what she says is often they would not truly realize the full benefits of old friends until the dying weeks. And it was not always possible to track them down. Many had become so caught up in their lives, their own lives, that they had let golden friendships slip by over the years. There were many deep regrets about not giving friendships the time and effort that they deserved. Everyone misses friends, their friends, when they are dying. Wow. So, yeah, you can say that's life. We move on. You know, we make new friends. Yeah, we may, we may make new friends. The question sometimes arises, what is a friend? Sometimes you feel that the friends you thought they were aren't real, true friends. Sometimes your real, true friends, you mistook, mistook them for not being true friends because they told you something that you didn't want to hear. Well, actually, true friends will do just that if they believe it's the right thing to do, um, which will tie into one of the other ones, the other regrets. So I think it's important that we all make time for our friends, our old school friends, our old buddies, our old, you know, pals, uh, even new friends, new friends that we make, people who we connect with, people who we can be ourselves with. You know, it's important that we nurture those relationships and not just friends, family. Some people within our own families have such personalities that we have a friendship type of relationship with them. So I think it's important that we pay heed uh, to this particular one at the same time. By the way, I mean, in some cultures, we go beyond just friendship. We call it brotherhood. And with that kind of a label, you know, there come responsibilities. Uh, hopefully be there for each other, especially when we are needed to be. Number three, I wish I'd had the courage to express my feelings. Um, many people suppress their feelings in order to keep peace with others. As a result, they settled for a mediocre existence and never became who they were truly capable of becoming. Many developed illnesses relating to the bitterness and resentment they carried as a result. And there's no surprise, our psychology is tied in with our physiology. Uh, when we have uh, these ill thoughts, it does have an effect on our physiology and physiological uh, makeup of our bodies. You know, we, we, we fall ill physically sometimes because of negative thoughts. Um, so it's only in our own best interest that we have positive thoughts. Um, this particular uh, regret is referring to things that they regretted not saying just to keep the peace. But sometimes, sometimes people regret not saying positive things. And it's amazing how how much of an effect that can have not only on us as the ones, as the people who are sharing our positive feelings and thoughts, but also on the people who are the recipients of those words. Uh, sometimes a few words of appreciation, sometimes a few words of, uh, you know, uh, uh, just positive things, sharing and feedback. And, um, you know, these, these things go a long way. These things go a long, long way. And you just don't know whose day you might make or week or even year. Um, so it's important, I guess. We don't, I guess, we, 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 we need to learn what kind of things to hold back on and which kind of things not to hold back on. Sometimes not saying anything is the best thing. But when it concerns yourself and your future, and if you feel that you're on the right, you're in, in the right, when it's a decision being made about yourself, or you, with you in the equation, or with your loved ones in the equation, then sometimes we have to speak up. And, uh, and, and at least we will have done what's right by us then live a life of regret afterwards. Number two, I wish I hadn't worked so hard. You know, a good friend of ours, um, Mike, the Time Doctor, Mike Gardner, a uh, very re well-known, renowned author in, in the field of time management. Whenever he used to deliver a talk, he always used to say, nobody ever lay on their deathbed wishing spent another day at the office or more time in the office so what the author says is this came from every male patient that i nursed they missed their children's youth and their partner's companionship 
Women also spoke of this regret, but as most were from an older generation, many of the female patients had not been breadwinners. All of the men I nursed deeply regretted spending so much of their lives on the treadmill of a work existence. I guess that's changed now. We have more women in the workplace than we did from the older generation that she's referring to. So it applies to both men and women um, and everyone in between that uh, that you spend more time with those who matter than just trying to build an empire or uh, you know uh, achieve certain goals in, in work and, and business. There has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. If there's not, there's obviously an imbalance. Um, so something... Uh, again, to pay heed, and this next one is one that I always talk about in the um, in, in whenever I'm asked to deliver a speech on that particular topic on uh, success on your own terms. And that is, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. So she says this was the most common regret of all, when people realise that the life is almost over and look back clearly on it. It is easy to see how many dreams have gone unfulfilled. Most people had not honored even half of their dreams and had to die knowing that it was due to choices they had made or not made. Health brings a freedom very few realize until they no longer have it. There's another saying I came across recently where somebody said, um, um, a person of good health has many wishes a person of not good health only has one um or something to that effect but you get the gist um this is probably the most important point of them all now yeah sure we're coming to the end of 2021 and we may have made choices again it comes down to our own choices we may have made decisions based on what we felt were the right decisions at the time but i think for those of you who who make resolutions for New Year's, let's not make a resolution. Let's make it a revolution. Let's make a revolution in our own lives. You know, let's uh, revolve and evolve from where we are to where we should be, where we deserve to be, every single one of us. Those of you who have uh, just been coasting, fine. Maybe you don't have the same motivation. Question is, why don't you have the same motivation? Is it right or is it wrong? Is another discussion altogether. But looking at these five regrets, you don't want to be sat on your deathbed thinking any of these things when you did have the time. I think life is about a lot of choices. We all have a choice. The choices we make today affect the choices we have tomorrow. So let's make the right choices. And on that note, guys, um, I hope you guys are all well. I hope you're keeping safe. I hope you're staying happy, making the right choices and the right decisions. Um, Hopefully, we'll come into the new year uh, with some new motivation. Hopefully, you don't just see turning off into 2022 as the landmark uh, moment where things changed we should be working towards improvement every day of our lives in some way even in small increments because those make the biggest differences so on that note um, I hope uh, that uh, this has been of some value to you guys and I look forward to seeing you in the new year with uh, a new episode you know, new series new series new season of Beardos Media our regular podcast um until then uh stay safe keep well uh if there's any questions that you have for me drop them in the inbox not sure when i'm going to look at them because i'm i'm offline most of the time these days uh but hopefully we'll get to catch up at some point or another take care god bless